Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and this video is for all you Cubase friends out there. On this video I'm going to talk about my 10 essential Cubase shortcuts that you should know and will make your workflow a lot faster. Now if you're a seasoned user you might know quite a few of them, but I've been using Cubase for as long as I can remember myself and I'm constantly finding new shortcuts in Cubase. Also, on this video I'm going to show you some shortcuts that I've created that have sped up my workflow immensely and they're not in Cubase by default. It's the way I've set it up over the years and I found which things I'm doing more and more and I do very often and basically I thought okay I need a shortcut for this so let's add a shortcut for this. That's the beauty of Cubase, you can create any shortcut you want and you can create macros. I'm gonna show you some macros as well. So let's get started, I hope this will speed up your Cubase workflow massively. Right, let's talk shortcuts. The first shortcut I want to show you is uh, the what I call the chopping shortcut. So, I mean, imagine that you want to do some vocal chops or you want to create some interesting stuttering effects. Stuff like this in Cubase, you could grab your scissors tool or you would press Alt and start clicking like that. And you would, if you want to create some stuttering effects, you could probably go like this and just uh, delete some of these and so on and so forth. This is all very good, but there's a quicker way to do this. So, the trick is to grab your scissors tool. So if you press three on your keyboard, you will activate your scissors tool. And then you can basically say, I want to click on this. See, old click and boom. See what happened? Now the scissors tool created 16th note segments. Why? Because I have my quantize value as 16th notes. So if I wanted 8th note segments, I could go like this and I would go like that. Now the trick to do this is to have snap activated. And that's my shortcut number two actually, it's snap on and off. That's one of the things that you will have to do very, very often in Cubase if you want to move things around. For example, let's say I'm in this um, uh, event right here and I want to move this and I have my grid type set to bar. Obviously, you can turn this to adapt to zoom, which is my favorite mode that was introduced in Cubase 10. And basically, the more zoomed in you are, the more resolution you have. But if you want to be completely free and move things around, or if you want to, you know, kind of align some claps that have a little bit of, you know, sound a reverse sound until the actual clap falls in, that's a very easy thing to do. You just go and press J on your keyboard, and then you activate and deactivate snap, which is really, really useful. For example, you can be like this, and you can be completely free, and then you activate it, and then you have your snap back. I'm sure that most of you Cubase users out there know it, but this is a very useful function, and I think it's worth mentioning. Now, of course, one of the most important things in Cubase is the zoom in and zoom out. Now, I'm going to give you a bunch of shortcuts here, because I'm pretty sure most of you know that zoom in is H on your keyboard and zoom out is G on your keyboard, right? This is all very good, but I'll show you something else. If you go Alt, G and H, you can zoom in and zoom out vertically like this. But there's another shortcut. If you go for Shift, G and H, now you're zooming in the waveforms. So especially if you have like, um, parts that were recorded uh, with uh, very low volume, maybe like minus 12 dB. Sometimes, you know, with pads, you can't really see what's going on. See this event right here? If I want to clearly see what's going on here, I just go Shift H, see? And now I have a nice representation of my waveform. And then I can go back to the original size. Now the next shortcut that's extremely useful is uh, when you want to loop a selection. And that's incredibly useful when you're working on a track and maybe you're building a drum loop or you're processing something or you're trying to find a click in a portion. For example, let's say I want to uh, go to this portion of my track and see I'm grabbing my range selection tool and I can go like this. And now the shortcut that you're looking for is Alt P. So when you press Alt P, you're basically looping that section over and over again. So it's very easy to start producing stuff, start adding like hi-hats, and uh, maybe if you're trying to find a mistake or if you're trying to, you know, basically work on your mix on a specific portion of the track, this is very easy. So very, very important shortcut. Remember, Alt-P, extremely useful if you want to loop things 
multiple times in a session. Now, the next shortcut I want to show you is all about editing, and this is an incredibly crucial shortcut if you're doing lots of uh, cuts, if you're uh, processing vocals and you want to cut the breaths, you want to, you know, change your S's and, uh, you know, lower them in volume. That's a very useful shortcut, and I'm going to show you what it is. Let's go to a vocal. Let's go here. This is a beautiful vocal from Rue. Shift GH, and I'm going to find that breath here. See? Let's go like this. Okay, let's say I want to make this breath a little bit lower in volume. Uh, there's a very, very quick way to do it. I'm going to deactivate snap, okay? So I'm gonna go like this, grab the breath, and now if I want to turn it down in volume, check what you have to do. The shortcut is Shift X. So this works with the range selection tool very well, and now I can, see, go like this, turn down that breath. Now, of course, I can do the same thing. I can go and uh, do a fade in here. Let's go here again, Shift X, take down that breath. If there's a nest that bothers me, in this case, we don't have problems, but... We See that S right here? I could basically just take it with my range selection tool, Shift X, and do this. And of course, it has many other uses. You can use it for pretty much everything else if you're editing a lot. Shift X, very, very useful shortcut. Now, another shortcut that I find extremely useful that doesn't exist in Cubase, I created it myself, is the Quantize Panel shortcut. And there are quite a few instances I find that you might want to edit your Quantize settings. So, I mean, normally what you would have to do is you would go to Edit, and then you would go to Quantize Panel, and then you open it. But it's a little bit slow, especially if you want to do this multiple times when you're editing different parts, you want to add a groove, you want to, you want to do tuplets, all these things. So what I've done is I've uh, created a shortcut for this, and my personal shortcut is Control Alt Q. So if I press Control Alt Q or Command Alt Q for the Mac, then I bring up my Quantize panel and it's always there. So it's very easy to bring it up without going into that menu. I find this shortcut very, very useful. Now, sticking with the Quantize uh, function, another shortcut that I found is very useful that again I assigned on my own is the Reset Quantize function. And let me show you what I mean. How many times have you had this scenario? Think about it. Uh, you quantize a part, and for most of the part it works, but for a few notes, like three or four notes, it didn't really work. So what do you do then? You know, you undo and then you redo it again, and then you've lost everything with all the other notes. So I found that this function in Cubase, see, I, let's uh, have this MIDI part right here, and let's go to the Quantize panel, see here, right there, uh, we have some really interesting options there, and they're all there, you know, uh, you can always access them through the inspector. But let's say I quantize this one, press Q, uh, let's go for something that makes more sense, like this, okay, and let's say that these guys work, they work very well, but these two guys, they didn't work so well, okay? So, how do I undo these? All you need to do is select them, and you go here and say, Reset Quantize, okay? And they're back in place, but you didn't affect these guys that were correct, and they were correctly quantized. In my case, what I assigned to this shortcut is Command-Shift-Q. So, see, now these are quantized, Command-Shift-Q, and they go back to their original place. For example, if my original place was here, or in the middle, and I quantize all of them again, again, if I grab those, Command-Shift-Q, I unquantize them, and everything else remains unaffected. Now, because I'm telling you how to set up your own shortcuts, let me show you how I do it. Basically, you go to Edit, and you go to Key Commands, and see, the command that you want is reset quantize, so you just type here reset, reset quantize, that's gonna be enough, and you'll find it. So, once you're happy with it and you found the command that you're looking for, just click on this region right here and say command shift Q, and then click on assign. In my case, it's there already. Now, another shortcut that I use every day of my life, literally, uh, to be honest with you, I can't really remember if it was if it already exists in Cubase or if it's uh, one of my personal shortcuts. I'm gonna show you anyway. Is adding a new track and adding a new audio channel or an instrument channel. So how do I do it? For a new instrument is 
Control Alt N or Command Alt N. See? So com Control Alt N and immediately I get the ad track for an instrument. Straight away, I don't have to go plus and then select what channel tab I want to add, it's all there. So then I can go add track, happy days. I press enter actually, and it's already done. Now for an audio channel, I go control shift N, and now I have an audio channel. And I can select my inputs, again, very, very easy. Now with group channels and effects channels, I have a very specific way of doing it, I'm gonna show you. So let's say I have these guitars right here, Okay, they're already in a group, but uh, let's say I want to put them into a group. So I select all of them, and what I do is I press Alt-Shift-G, and what that does is it adds these guitars into a group channel. So as you can see, I can set uh, my group channel as stereo or mono, I can add the name, let's say guitars, and add track. And now all of these guitars, they go to the new group channel that we just created. Now, this is a macro command, so let me show you how it's built. If you go edit, and you go key commands, there you can also select to show the macros, that's what you need. And in this case, there's a macro called tracks to group, see, if you open it, there's uh, all the functions there, mixer, add track to selected group channel. And in this case, what I did is I basically went there and uh, I literally added Alt Shift G. See, macro tracks to group. And that's it. Uh, now, the other macro that I'm using is um, the add effects channel to tracks. So, imagine you have vocals, you have five vocals, and you want to send them all to the same reverb. Then, what I'm using, let's, let's actually do it before I show you this. Uh, let's say I have these vocals, one, two, three, and I want to send them to the same delay. Alt-Shift-F, and I can add a delay right there, name it, and then all these channels of vocals will basically have a send to that delay. And then, this you set up like this, you go to key commands, and you go to your macros, and it's this one right here, add effects channel to tracks. The next shortcut I want to show you is the market shortcut. You have, let's say you have your chorus right here, and you want to insert a marker, you just press insert on your keyboard. I know that most laptops don't have that, uh, so sometimes I assign it to a different key, but there you go. But what I definitely have is I have my cycle marker as a shortcut, because let's say I want to create a cycle marker for my chorus. Another shortcut as well, P, to set my locators to an event. Let me see, I'm just selecting this, press P, and the locators are set there. I think you probably know that already. What I'm doing is I'm pressing Control insert and that's how I can create a marker, a cycle marker. It's very easy to loop a chorus if I want to without selecting, you know, events every single time. And also, you know, when you export your project and you want to have the exact same length every time, what I do is I always have like, a, you know, I select everything and I press P and then I create a marker that's basically my export. And then when I want to export uh, like a new version or a new mix, I don't have to go and set the markers all over again. It's already there and it's very easy to also export different versions because with Cubase you can export different cycle markers, which is really cool. Now I'm going to give you my last key command. And again, this is a customized key command, but I think you might find it useful if you don't have already a key assigned for this. And that's my quantize value. So. What I've done is I've um, assigned these bracket keys on my keyboards to the quantize, increase, and decrease value. See, so I can go very easily from like a full bar to a quarter note to a 32nd note, all these things. See how easy I can do this? So that's very, very simple. Now, let's go to the key commands and show you how this is done. The command that you're looking is select next quantize 
and select previous quantize. It's very, very useful because many times you want to move from one quantize value to another one. You know, let's say you are editing drums. That's extremely useful if you're editing drums and you have, let's say, hi-hats that play 16th notes, but then you want to quantize your kick drums in eighth notes or quarter notes. You know, this is really, really useful because that means you can move very quickly and change your quantize values. Adding to this, I also want to show you the other one that I've customized and that's my grid type is this one basically it's grid then you can do grid relative which is very useful if you have events that don't start exactly at the beginning of a bar but they extend a little bit at the you know before the beginning of the bar and you want to keep them in the same relative position grid relative is the way to do it events is also very useful because you might want to basically let's say sync this one to a marker you don't even it doesn't have to be exactly on the grid you can just snap it to the marker you know and then we have shuffle we have cursor all these things so these i have assigned to control and then again these brackets see so now i can move very quickly across these grid modes which is really, really tedious if you try and do it like that all the time, where everything is on your keyboard. And again, if I go to edit and key commands, it's here. It's select previous snap type, so control and bracket and left bracket, and select next snap type, control and right bracket. And also, I have the same thing for the grid type, so that's alt and left and right bracket. And this changes, see, right here, it changes this value. So I can go from bars, beats, use quantize, and adapt to zoom. Uh, which basically, to be honest with you, I don't use so often after Cubase had this adapt to zoom function because I found it works really, really nicely. So there you go, guys. Shortcuts, in my opinion, is one of the secret weapons when you're using your DAW. It will speed up your workflow. It will make you more creative because you don't have to go into menus to do, you know, pretty much anything. You can use a keyboard anywhere you are, even if when you don't have a controller with you. And you basically stop using your mouse so much, your hands don't get tenantitis or all these things. And it makes you look more professional. So if you're uh, a young producer and you want to work in a music studio, this will help you immensely because people hate it when they see you going like, okay, edit menu, okay, and uh, quantize. You know, this is slow. So try and learn your shortcuts. I hope this video helped you get an idea of what cool things you can do in Cubase with shortcuts. So if you find this video useful or entertaining, please consider clicking that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. I'm trying to do more and more videos these days, so this really helps. If you feel that you have somebody that would benefit from it or they would find it useful, feel free to share it. Until next time, have fun guys, happy music making.